15 runs on 17 hits and scored the largest opening day shutout win in big league history. And Clayton Kershaw led the way on the mound, giving up just one hit, striking out nine over seven scoreless frames. Dave Roberts picked up his first win in his first game, game two right now. From San Diego at Petco Park, we are ready for game two of this series and game two of the season as the Dodgers try to make it eight consecutive wins over the Padres dating back to last season. We say welcome inside with Oral and Nomar. I'm Joe Davis. Alana Rizzo joins us in just a moment. Quite a way to get the ball rolling yesterday with a 15 nothing win as we look ahead to day two now what's the mood like down in that Dodger clubhouse. Well we know just as well up in this booth it's happy it's really happy down there but as we know in a baseball season it is a book and it has chapters and yesterday was just a page and the players need to turn the page. Yes they're in a great mood the hitters especially almost all of them got a hit the pitcher Clayton Kershaw we won't see him for another four days or so the bullpens rested but it's turn the page and there's 161 more pages ages to go. All right, so let's turn it over here to him. We're going to talk <laughs> pitching. Scott Casimir makes his Dodger debut today in game two of the season. Well, he's going to go out there and try to do what Clayton Kershaw did the night before, which is tough to do. But at the same time, we're talking about Scott Casimir, who's an 11-year veteran who spent most of his career in the American League. This is his first in the National League. Somebody who's reinvented himself. At the age 23, he was a strikeout champion, and then he was sent out of the big leagues and went to independent ball to find himself to have the fifth best ERA amongst all left-handed pitchers last year so let's see what he can do in a Dodger uniform. Let's see what the Dodgers can do to support him if it's anything like yesterday with Adrian Gonzalez's performance and the guys around him Casimir should be sitting pretty. Alana Rizzo has more on Gonzo's hot start after this break.
For game two of the 2016 season on a perfect night for baseball. And our closed captioning is brought to you by Sideline. Add a second number to your smartphone. Shields will face off with his Honda starting lineup penned out by Dave Roberts. It is nearly identical to what he had on opening day. The lone difference comes down near the bottom of the lineup with Austin Barnes in. Ray J. Ellis in the eighth spot and doing the catching for Scott Kazmir in the the top two in the order, both a little bit of a surprise going into opening day. Chase Utley, he decides to make the leadoff hitter. And Corey Seager, who most assume would kind of ease back into things in the middle of the lineup after missing much of spring with the sore knee, but right into the two hole. And both of them productive in that 15 0 opening game win. James Shields, a 34 year old out of Santa Clarita, California, who signed a record deal for the Padres last year four year contract and in that first year was number one in the majors and home runs allowed despite being in a pitcher's park. Yeah not only was he in home runs allowed but he also ranked fifth in the NL in strikeouts last year and then he ranked second in the NL as far as base on ball so a tale of a couple pitchers there. Interesting note about him though since 2007 he's the only pitcher in the major leagues to throw 200 or more innings in every season since then. He comes at you with a fastball cutter curveball and a changeup. but the one stat that stands out to me from last year is in the first inning he had a 4.91 ERA so for the Dodgers get on him early. The Dodgers jumped on Tyson Ross early yesterday. Utley and Seager have back to back doubles and before Ross had even recorded an out the Dodgers had their first run of the year. We are not having a thunderstorm or a light outage. This is part <laughs> of the new San Diego Padre light show in pregame. I don't know if I'd like to be the leadoff hitter and they keep no. flashing the lights. You're trying to have time to adjust to the lights and we didn't get to see it yesterday because of the time of the game but now with a night game we get to see they're adding this as a new way to attract fans. And apparently they're the first National League ballpark to install the LED lighting it's supposed to give it a nice stage like feel down in the field. Here is Chase Utley who had those three hits knocked in a pair yesterday in the 15 nothing. Dodger opening day win. A 37 year old will lead things off again against James Shields. Off we go with strike one. It was only the 12th time in more than 1500 career games for Utley that he hit leadoff. Good chunk of them coming last year. Split between the Phillies and the Dodgers. Quickly behind Shields nothing in two. The first swing from Chase looked like he was guessing fastball just didn't get it middle or middle in so fortunately for him and the Dodgers swing and a miss. Shields makes quick work of Utley one away. Padres defense has improved this year especially with the addition of John Jay in center but Will Myers used to be their center fielder John Jay out there acquired from St. Louis and Justin Upton's brother used to be or is out there now Melvin up in the left field and of course Matt Kemp in right so there's more range to cover this expansive field here in San Diego. Where Corey Seager made his big league debut last September. And the double knocked into yesterday strike one. You know, so San Diego prior to last season went all in and they've won the offseason really and then lost a few more games than they did the pre prior year and while they really went all in offensively I think where things suffered especially was defensively it definitely their defense in the outfield was really bad Justin Upton doesn't cover a lot of ground he's now in Detroit with the Tigers another big outfield over there but they can DH him on some days. Seager cracks a pop up to short left. Upton coming on, laying out, won't get it. And Seager's got a base hit. Well, almost the rangy Melvin Upton gets to this ball, but Corey Seager with a full swing and breaks his bat, Nomar. Well, with that full swing, I think Melvin Upton couldn't get a good jump. I think he hesitated a little bit. After that full swing didn't recognize that it was just hit off the end of the bat which is tough to tell out there in the outfield but that slight hesitation allowed that ball to fall in. 
So Seeger with a one out single brings up Justin Turner. It was red hot all spring training. And continued that into the opener yesterday had a pair of doubles. Two of the 17 Dodger hits and two of the eight extra base hits. First right hander that Shields faces takes ball one. You now we talked about Justin Turner yesterday those pair of doubles but the one at bat that was impressive to me was actually is out in the very first inning when you had leadoff doubles by uh, Chase Utley and then Corey Seager and you had a man on second with nobody out and he hit a ground ball to second base to move him over. James Shields 11 big league season. Started out with the Rays and a couple of years with the Royals came to San Diego prior to last year. Had 13 wins but had an ERA near four. Seager at first with one away and a 2-0 2 2 and 1. You know James Shields if he shows effectiveness early and that his durability is there he could be a movable part. I don't think it's a, any secret that these Padres are going to be in a rebuilding mode here for the next two to three years and Melvin Upton Junior in left field probably immovable because of his contract and production but they've gotten Justin Upton out. Craig Kimbrell has been dealt to get some draft picks back. Turner pulls one to short Ramirez makes the play with a backhand and they turn two. There's some of that improved defense Alexi Ramirez in his first year in a Padre uniform starts the twin killing. Well showing off that athleticism what a fine backhanded play it almost looked like he did the splits and a perfect turn over there at second base. Go for this second game of the 2016 season. Andy Green open for his first managerial win and sending this lineup to the plate brought to you by Honda. John Jay, a new addition. Same thing down near the bottom of the order with Alexi Ramirez. Melvin Upton came over last year and bats in front of James Shields. And this lineup will go against Scott Casimir, who makes his Dodger debut tonight. 32 year old out of Houston. And through in his 12th big league season. 12 years in the big leagues. He is definitely a veteran been up and down through the minors reinvented himself. Tough spring training statistically but the arm strength started to come at the end of camp fastball now averaging close to 92 miles an hour. As camp went on that increased three four mile an hour and he feels like he's ready to start the year. John Jay stands in and takes strike one. Bruce your Padre. Over from the Cardinals. We dealt with a wrist injury for much of last year. Bouncing ball to Turner. 
So one difference in this Dodger lineup tonight, and it comes at a key spot. Austin Barnes doing the catching for Casimir. Well, Dave Roberts said before the game that during this road trip, you'll probably split time half and half, Austin Barnes and A.J. Ellis. And I'll tell you, with Austin Barnes behind home plate, they are not losing anything defensively. He's got a strong arm behind home plate, of unbelievable athleticism back there, and that athleticism shows that he, his versatility as well because he can play third base and second base as well. Kazmir to Corey Spangenberg who takes ball one. Spangenberg hit out of the eighth spot last night, went over three. And a guy that moved into an everyday role late last season opens this year as the starting second baseman for the Padres. Strike one. Scott Kazmir slipped into the number two role, even though Kenta Maeda, who pitches tomorrow, is right handed where you could break up the lefties. But I really don't consider Clayton Kershaw a left hander per se. He is just <laughs> in a planet of his own. <laughs> and then everybody else just fill in behind him. Just instead of left hander, just say the best. Yeah, the best. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because I, I guarantee you opposing teams aren't worried that he's left handed. <laughs> And stylistically, there's so much different, not just the fact that he's on his own level. Yeah, and, and when Clayton pitches against another team and they've got their platoon players in there, their righties that they want to get in there, which he mostly faces, it's not like those righties are coming out of that game comfortable <laughs> and looking forward now to another lefty. They're like, oh my gosh, like Clayton's gone by. Well, or a lot of pitchers, you know, who are following and, and doing their own scouting reports. The roller past the mound is second. Chase Utley throws wide. Lost the grip on it. Spangenberg's the ball with one away. Lost the grip on the throw, but he might have lost a little footing also at the same time. Yeah, he does. It looks like he goes to this, and it looks like he just wasn't comfortable when he got there. And Spangenberg hustling down the line right from the get go, knowing he got that off the end of the bat. Sounded like a broken bat. That's one of those as an infielder where it's tough to decide where you almost should have just charged that and had maybe possibly throw off the run with the speed of Spangenberg. Brings up former Dodger Mac Kemp. Who struck out twice. In his debut la yesterday. Casimir Barnes going to come together. Well, Barnes and Ellis set to split time during the season opening road trip. Rotating days. You know, Barnes has known that he'd start this game with Kazmir for a few days, Dave Roberts said earlier. So they've been communicating about their plan of attack leading up to today's game. First one to Matt Kemp is taken for a strike. 11th big league season. Second one in San Diego. It was traded in that five player deal prior to last season that brought Yasmani Grandal to the Dodgers. Going inside with an 0 1. And misses down and away. One ball, one strike. So Austin Barnes giving the signs there before the last pitch. Sometimes. A pitcher and catcher will go multiple signs even with a man on first especially if it's a base runner because you don't want them to be able to glance in there and see the pitch from the angle at first base when they get their lead and if they are seeing in there between the legs you don't want them to know what's coming. Well, there's a lot of different things you can peek in at if you're a base runner one you try to see if that knee is blocking the signs the numbers the other thing you can kind of key on to at times is actually their forearm. So when they the forearm has a different movement say they put a two down or a one. So if you're giving multiple ones and you see that forearm moving differently there's nothing you can actually look like the, the muscles firing to decide if it's a fastball or off speed pitch. It's the same reason I wore the long sleeves down to cover my wrist bones on the mound because when you go into the glove for different grip pressures. You don't want them to be able to see that wrist bone because of the angle or seeing the muscles in the forearm how they change. It seems a little deep but believe me there are guys on the field concentrating on that mm -hmm. stuff. Looking for every edge you can get. Yeah, there's a lot of times too is the way they 
the catcher will give a sign to pick off is a lot of times used to be that thumb and they used to kind of turn the thumb like almost point that way to first base and you could really see that arm move and at least recognize that they're going to try to pick you off. Good lead for Spangenberg after a couple of pickoffs. Kemp hits a pop up the short center. Jock Peterson and Yasiel Puig come together and somehow Peterson makes the catch reaching around Puig as they dodge a mm -hmm. bullet for the second out of the inning. It is really dodging a bullet. I mean, here are two guys that have played with each other. They played with each other all last year. Should know that. Once Jock Peterson calls, you see the hand he's yelling at. That's when Yasiel has to move out of the way. You can't even get near that. You hear Yasiel, it looks like Yasiel's calling it. And there are times when you're both calling it at the same time so you don't hear each other. But either way, Yasiel has to be aware and start listening. He shouldn't even call it. He has to listen. And once Jock says, I got it, you got to get out of his way so there's no chance of a collision. Know how he was able to catch it reaching around Puig he had already gone by him still reached back to make the play and bring up Will Myers a couple of former Rays going at it here actually a former Devil Ray against a former Ray Casimir was in Tampa Bay early on in his career Myers was in Tampa Bay for a short period of time after he was traded there for San Diego starter tonight and James Shields after Myers began his career in Kansas City as one of the top prospects in the game injuries have sapped his prospect status played in only 60 games last year dealing with a lingering wrist injury in his first year in San Diego. Dodger debut tonight for Scott Kazmir. Six different team he's played for. First one in the National League. After a long pause, time is called. The best numbers of his career last year over the first four months with Oakland. And was traded to Houston at the deadline. Struggled some there. Dodgers signing him on a three year contract. Entering this 2016 year. Derek Norris due up next. The runner at first and two gone in a scoreless first inning. Here comes a 2 1 to Myers. Line towards center. Peterson coming on to make the play. And the inning is over. Padres get a softly hit infield single, but no damage and no score as we go to the second.
near collision in the first inning where Peterson was able to make the play despite coming together with Puig in the gap. Dodgers back at it against James Shields. Adrian Gonzalez goes after the first pitch. One pitch, one out. So yeah. that, that's 5-3 I was going to say. At four, and yep. put a little star okay. in your butt. There you so go. is that what we're going with? Five, three, at four. We're just going to steal that from Oral. So young Herbis Salarte, the third baseman, was positioned in the shift over where the second baseman normally plays. And so we're having to learn new ways to score. It's not officially stealing it from me because I haven't patented. Oh, it'll be all right. Okay, I think well, get but away I'm with still it. giving you credit. I appreciate it. You're welcome. There's Puig now. Had a triple yesterday. A couple of base hits total. Turn that triple into an old Little League home run with an air on the throw on his slide into third. The 1 0. Tried to lay off. Couldn't. One ball, one strike. Scored three of the 15 Dodger runs yesterday. All nine starters in that lineup. Had at least one hit and had at least one run. Like we see in years past, Yasiel likes to beat himself up with that bat. <laughs> he always going, oh, don't, hit, don't hit yourself so hard. Well, here's that triple he had yesterday on a breaking ball that was down last it to the opposite field always a good sign no more. it is I, I think when Yasiel is at his peak or playing his best is when he's driving the ball to the opposite way he has so much power he can hit it out of the ballpark right center gap matter of fact that ball he just fouled off in that pitch prior to that it looked like he if he had he stayed inside it almost went the other way with that as well I and mean, there it is. Good spot. He just missed it. But if he's able to square that ball up, he's driving that the other way. Here comes a 2 2, and Puig takes a change that fades Lauren in and runs the count full. Good job right there on Yasiel. He actually had a check swing earlier in this at bat with a change up that kind of ran in sure. on him, and it was a strike because he went. They called it. He tried to check his swing, and that one he recognized the movement on the ball because that started off as a strike and fell off the plate. See what Shields goes to on a 3 2. Fastball way off. That's ball four. And Puig hustles his way down to first. That was a good at bat by Yasio. Like I said, is that showing the adjustment in the middle of that bat? We talked about how he fouled that one pitch off. It looked like he was going the other way. But also after that check swing, recognizing the movement on his pitches and taking it for that full count and getting that pitch. I'll tell you, as a pitcher, when I watch a hitter have a good approach to the pitch, you get a lot more respect. If that foul ball would have been like with a bad swing and bad execution, it would show me in a hole in his swing and where to go. Make a good swing like that, Shields is like, I'm not sure. Former Tampa Bay teammate Shields and Carl Crawford now. That's ball one. You talked about it a couple of weeks ago when we were in Arizona. The pitcher hitter duel being an exchange of information. And Nomar and I were talking about that at lunch today. Just the, the back and the forth and the back and the forth of you give me information, I give you information, and then and what we read from it and what adjustments hitters and pitchers make. Comes a 1 0. Crawford hits a fly ball to center. John Jay is under it. Two gone. So Crawford retired and in a scoreless second inning here's Jack Peterson who had a couple of bullets yesterday two doubles on the final line but a couple of balls that he hit hard that were caught one of them right into the shift off one bounce. You know, you'll hear Nomar and I get excited about a foul ball from Yasiel or a foul ball or approach from Jock in this at bat. And it's about execution. It's not about results. We're looking for the changes in the swings, the changes in the approaches that say these guys have made the adjustments and we can count on them this year. And as a fan, you might be listening at home and going, what's he so excited about a foul ball or a swing? 
you know, let's get some hits or let's hit a home run. It's not, but that will come. It's about execution. It's about a consistent approach and a consistent swing. And it is those bounce backs that the Dodgers are counting on. This lineup largely unchanged from last year. But you mentioned Puig with 255 in his 79 games, dealing with hamstring injuries, has shown that he can be an all star. The case of Peterson was an all star, hit 20 home runs over the first few months, but then an average below 200 and only six home runs over the last three months of the season. Same thing with Yasmani Grandal, who dealt with a shoulder injury down the stretch after an all star first half. Shields comes home 0 2. That's one of those things you like to see. The ball kicks away from Norris. That allows Puig to advance into scoring position. Uh, Yasiel on that pitch actually broke hard as if he was stealing, and then he couldn't read that ball in the dirt, and then he noticed how it, he was kicked in front, and that's when Yasiel, see that fake right there, and actually he was kind of going back, and then he saw where that ball was going and able to get there easily. On a nice take from Jock. Hunter but second with two gone. And a one two to Jock Peterson. Got it. Second punch out for James Shields and the Dodgers leave the man at second. We go to the bottom of the second in San Diego. Go to the bottom of the second. Scott Casimir back to work in his Dodger debut. Okay, the debut in the majors back in 2004. He was only 20 when he broke in as a highly touted prospect. It's a strikeout champion a few years after that. Went from being an all star in 2008 to having the worst ERA in the American League in 2010. Was released a year later. Spent a year in indie ball. That was an all-star again in 2014. It has been quite the ride for Scott Casimir who delivers strike one to Derek Norris. We heard a lot in spring training. His teammates talk about how much they just respect him. Not only you know you respect the veterans, but also what he's gone through to get himself back into the major leagues. It takes a lot of humility to all of a sudden step out of the big league life, fail at the big league life after succeeding, and then go back to the minors. Norris bangs one wide of third and foul strike two. A few years ago he went home suburban Houston built a mound in his backyard and minor injuries that had built up and it altered his mechanics 
And that snowballs, you try to correct from one mistake and create another. The velocity had dipped into the low to mid 80s. Slowly built that back up into the 90s. Signed with the Sugarland Skeeters. And independent baseball. That was only three years ago. And the numbers were not good with the Sugarland Skeeters in the Atlantic League. And an ERA above five, but showed enough to get another big league contract. Signing with the Indians in 2013, earning a spot in that rotation, having a great year to get his career back on track. Got to tip your hat to a guy who puts himself through all that and makes it back. As his first strikeout of the night, the first out of the second inning, as Derek Norris sits down. Celebrate the legacy of Jackie Robinson Friday, April 15. Dodgers and Giants play at 7:10, and the first 40,000 fans in attendance get an adult replica Jackie Robinson jersey from Bank of America. Visit Dodgers.com/promotions. One away in the second. Here's young Hervis Solarte. Who knows a little something about grinding away in the minors. Eight and a half seasons for him in the minors before he made his debut with the Yankees in 2014. And turns on one, flies it into left. Easy play call, Crawford. Part of that remake for Scott Kazmir was a changeup, and right there he got a strikeout on the changeup this inning, and there took the sting out of Salarte's bat by getting him out front. A weak fly ball. It's not always about making him swing and miss like the batter before, but the changeup with the grip and the spin, you see just not enough swing left to barrel that one up, hit off the end. Alexi Ramirez now taking a ball. Former Chicago White Sox, and they hope part of the equation to improving the defense some. He's been a really consistent hitter for much of his career, but struggled last year, and so the Padres got him at a bit of a bargain. Well, he already showed off the defense in that first inning with that double play of Justin Turner sliding, looked like he was doing the splits, making a perfect throw to second base. Two and one. You know, guys, the Padres have gone through almost 20 shortstops over the last six seasons. There's a revolving door there last year. They go out and sign Ramirez to a one year, $4 million deal with a mutual option for next year. And they're getting a guy that has been really durable throughout his career. And he's had some success against the Dodgers. He comes in at a 344 batting average in just 15 games versus the Dodgers, but also against Kazmir. 364 in his career against Kazmir. Couple of doubles against him, home run. Yeah. It's a fly ball to left here. Crawford back at first, comes on to complete a 1 2 3 second inning. For Scott Casimir, Crawford may be full, but a big swing from Ramirez had him moving back at first. No score after two.
Petco Park will host the All-Star Game this year. Host in the opening series of the year this year between the Dodgers and the Padres. Austin Barnes up there for the first time, taking ball one from Shields. Making the start at catcher, hitting eight today. He and A.J. Ellis will share time in that spot during this road trip with the Osmani Grandal still due back for the home opener. You know, in spring training, before you have 10 guys on the DL, you start to procrastinate, you know, and pro look at what is the roster going to look like. And there weren't any of those big, huge roster decisions because of all the injuries. But there's going to be some during the regular season as these guys get healthy. And Dave Roberts said, they asked him about that when these guys, you know, get healthy. Has he been thinking about that? And he said, you know, those things have a way of working themselves out. And, uh, and you know, he's right. There's no need to look in the future. You got to look at what we have right now. And well, it's also with Yasmani being hurt and A.J. Ellis and Austin going to split the time up until that home opener. They're going to actually have an idea what they have a little bit better in Austin Barnes. So instead of saying, A.J., Yasmani will be back and he'll be splitting time with you when he finally gets back and healthy and Austin you're just going to sit there on the bench. You wouldn't know anything about Austin Barnes as much. But now. AJ's going to be rested. And he's going to be into the whole thing. He's sitting there on the top step cheering for his buddy. And the guy he's. Working with. And. This is a good time and a and a good problem to have. Remember last year when Yasmani joined Dodgers, how much he was talking about L AJ and how important he was and the transition and helping him out. And it's no difference with Austin Barnes. Barnes chases a breaking ball that was off for strike three. Alana Rizzo, AJ Ellis is turned into a mentor already for Barnes. Huh? No, no question about it, Joe. In fact, he spent several hours with Austin Barnes earlier today going over the game plan as far as the San Diego lineup was concerned. And even if he's not behind the plate, he is very involved in everything that's going on with the game. Of course, as you might imagine, a veteran catcher would be. In fact, Dave Roberts before the game likened him to what he called a ploach, basically a player coach, and certainly sees AJ Ellis manage at some point. That's a very high compliment. <laughs> it really is. The other one I hear get a compliment like that. You hear over there St. Louis Cardinals. Mike Matheny said that about yeah, yeah, your Molina. Mm -hmm. And they talk about for a manager, they feel like it's it's always nice to have a coach out there that they that they can trust and put the ball game in their hands. Oh, and two on Scott Casimir. Well that goes to complimenting AJ's ability to communicate with players be a leader get on them and also take care of them. And they make it a lot easier for us because he's a really good interview. <laughs> yeah if he doesn't want to manage he can come up here and join us. Thank you. No, I'd rather he manage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gasmir turns on this one and launches it foul. He'd probably enjoy managing more because it's a lot easier than what we do. Yeah yeah you guys <laughs> grinding. Nice job by Casimir to stay alive and. This is his 12th big league season but it's his first in the National League. This is only his 27th career at bat. Salon. <laughs> That's the help the pitchers out so they can see. Casimir puts it in play to short Ramirez. We were talking about the new LED lights they have here at Petco Park. Well, still get a shot. You still need to paint your fingers because you can't see even with these new lights. How about the new jerseys for the Padres? I like the Browns. They're throwing it back to the 1970s for these. I, I, I like the Brown. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah, I do. Oh, wow. I, well, I'm just, I do. Don't give me an ooh wow. I just <laughs> I don't like the brown. <laughs> Back to the top second trip through. Chase Utley struck out his first time. 
And pulls a line drive to right center. John Jay goes back and pulls it in to complete a one, two, three, third inning for James Shields. Roberts right down the road 45 minutes that's where he attended high school about 45 minutes north of Petco Park Rancho Buena Vista High School in fact he went there his sophomore junior and senior year graduated in 1990 he won the CIF 3A football championship in 1989 it was an all pretty much an all rushing team back then but he was the quarterback still had some decent passing records there retired the number 10 football jersey and his baseball jersey before going on to UCLA having a tremendous 10 year career in Major League Baseball and now in his first couple of days as the Los Angeles Dodgers manager but certainly a hometown hero here guys. All right Alana. And Scott Casimir delivers to Melvin Upton Jr. and he's ahead of him on two. He moved here. His family moved here when he was in seventh grade and that was in 1984 during the Padres pennant run. And played a couple of seasons here. Spent the last five years here as a first base coach and then as a bench coach. And off to a rousing start in his managerial career. Technically had one game last year after Bud Black was let go before Pat Murphy took the reins. The first time as the undisputed guy was a 15 nothing win and he got doused by a Gatorade bath following the game. I have really been impressed with him since I've gotten to know him more now that he's a manager and the way he conducted himself through all of spring training the relationship he built with the coaches and the players. And I think that you know I think that Gatorade bath says something I mean you know yeah. so <laughs> game but, one but the fact yeah. that you know that he had They're that free. report yeah that. They feel like they can enjoy their time with them. Upton Jr. on the ground is short. This is Corey Seager for the first down of the inning. Yeah, somebody asked him today during his media scrum, have you ever gotten a Gatorade bath before? He said, no, no, I haven't. He said, actually, yeah, I have as a player, but I haven't as a manager until then. It was your first game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to wait long. And being a guy like Nomar and I who have put the Dodger uniform on the respect he shows for the the older Dodgers the retired Dodgers throughout his time now as manager in spring training and the early portion of the season right here. Just tremendous not somebody who has been given the helm and said all right I'm going to do it my way you know I got this on my own. He is reaching out moment by moment every day. Shields pops one up. Jay Zotley staring into the San Diego night two away. That was the book on Dave Roberts right that he was a world class communicator. 
And also just the humility he has mm -hmm. to, you know, he's put in the position as a manager, but as Oral said, just to be open to so many and inviting to so many. He has an infectious personality. And it goes a long way. I mean, instant respect when he walks through that door. Casimir's second time to the Padres order starts with ball one to John Jay. And grounded out to third his first time. You know when you know someone is comfortable in their own skin? That's Dave Roberts. Off of the handle to second. This is eight straight retired by Scott Casimir. by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. And by Carl's Jr., the Midnight Moonshine Burger with moonshine glaze and garlic pepper onion straws only at Carl's Jr. Back in San Diego, two, three, and four coming out for the Dodgers in a scoreless fourth inning. Corey Seager singled his first time on a bloop shot to left. And is the only Dodger hit. Goes after the first one from James Shield, strike one. 21 years old. Goes in turn 22 for another few weeks. Made his big league debut in this ballpark with a two hit game early last September. Became the everyday shortstop by the time the end of the season had rolled around. Back up the middle and into center for a base hit. Two Dodger hits, both of them from Corey Seeger. Our leadoff hitter is 37 years old. Our second hitter is 21. I, that might be the largest differential in age between a leadoff <laughs> hitter and a second hitter. The only one I can think of is maybe when Ricky Henderson was at the end of his career. I don't know who hit two behind him that could be younger than Corey. Wouldn't it normally go the other way around? You'd have the, I would the young think so. speedy guy Easily. hitting leadoff and then yeah. the, the savvy move you over guy hitting <laughs> second. Exactly. Here's Justin Turner. Joe's bunt takes the ball. Shields got Turner to ground into a double play after Seeger's first inning single to get out of that inning. And they used to call Big Game James, home of the one off. Turner flips one into right for Matt Kemp. It carries well. Kemp lays out and makes the play. Seager hustles back to first. One out. 
Well, JT did just kind of serve this one out to right. Matt Kemp really runs an odd route, kind of a J route. You see how he's going straight along the edge of the wall and then has to turn hard to his right. Ends up being a desperation catch that'll make the film on some highlight reels, but really it's a poor route and a misread. Well, that's one thing that Matt Kemp has been able to do with his athleticism is make up. Maybe that first step isn't quite as efficient. And he takes that route, yet the athleticism makes up to make a tremendous catch. I tell you, for Corey Seager, he had to read that as he, he noticed the route. So he was over there by second base waiting for that. As you see, James Shields just appreciated, but he didn't reach second. You see that slip. But if that gets by Matt Kemp, he has a chance of possibly scoring. So the whole new stat cast data that we get, they started tracking last year. There's a category that is route efficiency. 100 is a perfect straight line. That was not 100. No. <laughs> no. It's an out. Ooh. Whoa. I tell you what. He, he runs for a long time oh, with yeah. a shift on. There's the shift on. There's nobody over there. He almost threw that ball away. You saw James Shield just tell him right now, hey, listen. Lob it to me. Right. Yeah, don't gun it here and then miss me. Will Myers at first base played some first late last year, but this is his first time as the everyday first baseman. Adrian Gonzalez takes ball one. After Adrian's first at bat he was standing next to Turner Ward and he made a motion with his hand like a darting motion and he was talking about the fastball movement from James Shields on when he grounded out. And I think right there Adrian's starting to kind of zero in on that movement make him get the ball up so he can drive it to left field. That's a good read right there because that ball start off in the strike zone one it almost looks like you're one that you can actually really turn on and drive and it's still lay off of that one of the reasons he may have lay off because he might have been looking away not only up but also away so he can let leave the inner half alone give him the green light if he wants it painted for a strike three and one Adrian in the four hole Yasiel there in the five hole but Adrian saw Chase Utley punched out on a backdoor cutter in his first at bat and he is one of those really studious hitters that is watching all the sequences especially against the left handers. In the air to center and hit well John Jay back turns around and doesn't get it. He misplayed it horribly Seeger stops it third on a double from Gonzalez. Misread it. And Gonzalez benefits. Corey Seager has had a couple of balls to really read tough reads one to right and now to center Adrian Gonzalez scorches this ball. It's got a little side spin on it that really fools Jay a couple of poor routes by Padres outfielders and this one burns them. And you got to recognize out there that it's a lefty coming off the left handed bat and that if it's going to tail it's going to tail away or to his glove side. And you saw John Jay slip out there. As you mentioned, we've seen two balls kind of misread out there. One was able to make a catch with Matt Kemp, and then that one falls in. And see if the Dodgers can capitalize on this. Yasiel Pui walked his first time. Bats with runners at second and third. And one away in a scoreless fourth inning. Ball one. First let's go Dodgers chant of the night. San Diego. And for Yasiel you got the infield back. So this is this is a key for Yasiel right here. I mean this is one where you're going OK. You're thinking maybe if I get a pitch to drive in the air but at the same time I'm still thinking back up the middle especially with the infield back where even a ground ball up the middle should score Seager. 
comes Shields with a 1-1. We take a low strike one and two. Borderline in, borderline low. Now this is the key right here. Once you get two strikes, you got to really shorten up here and just think about putting that ball in play. That was really close. It looked like it might have been just too far down out of the zone. But nonetheless, two strikes, shorten up. Like I said, it's infield still back. Shields would love a strikeout. Puig trying to put it in play and break this scoreless tie in the fourth. These kind of RBIs are the kind of RBIs that take you from somebody that could drive in 60 to somebody that can drive in 90 to 100. One, two. Just missed. Two and two. Little front door cutter right mm. there. That same pitch was to Chase Utley in his first at bat, considered a backdoor cutter because Utley's a left handed hitter here, trying to throw a ball that looks like it's going to be inside and work its way back to the corner, just doesn't cut enough. That's a good idea because remember Yasiel's last at bat where it was the ball that was tailing in that Yasiel let go. So now you go in the same spot. He can assume that's going to tail, but it cuts back. Inside again, he turns this one around, sends it on a ride to center. Jay won't get there. It's off the wall, and Yasiel Puig is knocked in the game's first two runs with the triple. His second in as many games in 2016. It's 2-0 Dodgers. We talked about the walk that Yasiel had in his at bat before staying inside the ball it looked like well even he did the same thing here look how he brought his hands inside on the ball that was on the inner half keeps him in nice drives him he didn't pull off the ball that's something we saw an awful lot from Yasiel last year staying on and he just drove that I mean that wasn't a battery by John Jay in center field that was just a ball that was just scorched and carried over his head for a nice triple. You can get excited now about the execution and the results. And now the infield does come in as Carl Crawford comes up. Fly to center his first time. One for four so far this year. Awkward looking pickoff toss and Puig in easily. Well, Yasiel's past has shown that he can fall asleep a little bit on the base pass and Shields trying to take advantage of that pedigree. Shot through the drawn in infield to bring in Puig. Carl Crawford with an RBI single and it's 3 nothing Dodgers. It's not pretty, but it's effective. Just put it in play, infield in. You're trying to really hit it in the air, but Carl just stays on that, hits a two hopper in the hole. That gets the job done. Well, when your infield's in, it's a bigger hole over there. Fourth hit of the inning, single from Seeger, double from Gonzalez. It was misread in center by John Jay. Two run triple from Puig and then the RBI single from Crawford. Now Jock Peterson stabs at it strike one. You know not a bad idea by Jock. You got the shift on it's just one out. Also if you get if you lay that bunt down if you get that and you push that over you have with the wheels of Carl Crawford that he could possibly go from second all the way to third. Even on that, but the only thing I didn't like about the attempt, Nomar, is the weight is going towards first base. It's really about the quality of the bunt, not how quick you get out of the box when you're bunting against a shift. Yeah, you just, just have to get, get it, it over down. There, right? Well, he tried that time. He that, listened to your yeah, the weight. His weight should actually be like he's making a push bunt to third, not even worrying about getting out of the box. Like a right-handed hitter pushing a bunt to the second baseman. The left handed hitter should be taking his weight across home plate almost making contact staying in the box and then starting his route to first base from in front of home plate. Yeah, he definitely did that right. Mm 
on that time. See if he tries again or swings away with two strikes on him. I think they'd be upset with him if he tried it again. You're going, all right, you got you tried it twice. Let's go swing away. But what you do right here is you wait, you stay inside the ball, and you and drive the ball through that big hole. Yep. If I'm on the mound right now and I've got two strikes on Jock Peterson and I, I don't have fielders on the left side of the infield predominantly, I feel naked as a pitcher. I'm like, I want them all kind of back where they normally go. Clayton Kershaw has talked again recently about how the, fa how the fact that he's not completely sold on shifts around him and you've said the kind of the same thing just because of what it does to you mentally. Well for me I, I'm going to have to throw Jock something on the inner half or something slow so he hits into my defense. I want to be able to still be able to throw my hard sinker away which Shields has shown that he likes to throw to left handed hitters. But that's a pitch that kind of lays it right into Jock to be able to hit it to left field. Swings over a breaking Double. ball. He argues that he got a tip of it, and he did. So the last two pitches since Shields has gotten its two strikes have been breaking balls. This one low, almost in the dirt. Jock just tips it. But right about now, if Jock's thinking, all right, he's throwing me two breaking balls, need to stay back, need to fight the fastball off and stay on the curveball. Well, fighting the fastball off right here is going to be a nice little base mm -hmm. hit the left field. Like a backdoor cutter. Puig with a two run triple. And that scored on Crawford single through the drawn in infield. All three Dodger runs coming here in the fourth. Crawford at first with one away. A lot of baseball talk going on on that bench. That is a really good sign. Yasiel Puig, Turner Ward talking baseball. Justin Turner, Adrian Gonzalez there grinding it. Right down the middle with a fastball for strike three. Peterson strikes out for the second time tonight. It's the fourth punch out total for Shields and two gone in the fourth. Paralysis by analysis, maybe right there. That's a fastball right down the middle with a two strike count. Yeah, that one you can say uh, he wasn't looking fastball. <laughs> yeah. Austin Barnes struck out in a high breaking ball his first time. Bats with two gone in the fourth. Takes ball one. James Shields. Number one in the majors in game started. Number one in the majors in innings pitch since he became a full-time big leaguer in 2007. Eight consecutive years of at least 33 starts and at least 200 innings. Dodgers making him work, though, here in the fourth. The 1-0. Barnes lifts it to center. John Jay, an adventurous fourth inning, has an easy finish to it. And the Dodgers break the scoring seal on a triple from Puig, and it's 3 0 as we go to the bottom of the fourth.
Think Scott Kazmir has been getting some outs on his changeup, pitching off the fastball, well located in the high 80s most of the time. But the talent that he has brought to this game and to the Dodgers is the large speed differential between the fastball and the changeup. Not many guys can drop it down 16, 17 miles an hour. Most changeups, 8 to 10 miles an hour. Swing and miss changeups are that great differential, and he's got it. Two, three, and four for the Padres this inning. Corey Spangenberg has the lone hit today for San Diego. Remember, it was on a ball that Chase Utley, I'm sure if you asked him, would tell you he should have been able to make the play on. Lost his footing and then all kind of slipped out of his hand on the throw. And they credited Spangenberg with a base hit. For you as a pitcher, you get your, your team just puts three runs up on the board. I mean, how are you, how much is your focus on this very first hitter to get that first out and try to make it a quick inning? You always know it's first pitch strikes, get the first batter of an inning, but it gives you that extra level of focus to really, it's almost like thanking your team for the runs. Mm -hmm. If he would happen to walk this guy, it would be the most angry he's been all day. Off the corner, count goes full. Three, two. First three ball count of the game that a Padres hitter has worked against Scott Casmer has been really efficient. He's only thrown 41 pitches. Here we are early on in the fourth inning. And his first start in a Dodger uniform. Sixth team, former Ray, former Angel, former Indian, former A, former Astro. Strike three over the outside corner. What a way to battle back to get his second punch out tonight. Ball behind three and one after your team gets you three runs. Get back to three and two. Fight, fight, and then throw a nice solid pitcher's pitch low and away, outer half. You want to hit that? You're probably going to hit a ground ball, which I get a lot of. You want to take it? You can take a seat. That's what Spangenberg does, and here's Matt Kemp. Light out to center his first time up. Take strike one. A solid second half last year in his Padre debut after a really rough first half, similar to his 2014 with the Dodgers. Cracks one on the ground is short. Corey Seager, two up, two down. This week only, T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB to sign up now and catch every moment on America's fastest-growing LTE network. Ten in a row retired by Scott Kazmir. Clean up man Will Myers now. Strike one and a disappearing change. You guys have talked about that change up that has helped him turn things around in his career. The average separation between fastball speed and changeup speed in the majors is eight miles per hour. His average separation last year, 15 miles per hour, 91 on the fastball, and he averaged 76 with that changeup. The hitter starts the same time on your delivery. It takes about eight to 12 miles an hour to move a ball from hit down the right field line to down the left field line as far as the bat speed being the same and everything. Once you get above 10, 12 miles an hour, now you get to a point where the ball is not even being contacted if the batter started at the same time. The swing is already gone.
Got him. Bookend strikeouts in another perfect inning for Scott Kazmir. This time the victim, Will Myers. The Toyota dealers get huge cash back on a new camera. Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Get huge cash back on a new Camry or a Corolla at Toyota's Axe the Tax sales event. Back in San Diego in a 3 0 game with the Dodgers in front of the Padres and Scott Casimir coming up against his former Rays teammate, James Shields, who delivers strike one. First opening day start that James Shields ever made was in 2008 when Scott Casimir started the season injured. So that opened the door for Shields to move into the top part of the rotation in that 2008 season where the Rays won the pennant with Andrew Friedman as the GM in Tampa. Multiple stops since for both guys. Down on strikes is Kazmir. That's the fifth punch out of the game for Shields and one away in the fifth. And Shields was traded with Wade Davis to Kansas City for Jake Odorizzi and Will Myers before the 2013 season. That initially was known as the Will Myers James Shields trade, but it's crazy to think that Wade Davis was almost a throw in in that deal and has turned into one of the key pieces in what is bordering on becoming a mini dynasty in Kansas City right now. Keyed by that bullpen. Keyed by Wade Davis. Strike one to Chase Utley. They've got some flame flowers in that Kansas City bullpen and they have shown that they can perform at the highest level in the, the highest pressure situations. Utley's 0 for 2 tonight. Strike out in the first inning. Line out to center in the third. It was Chase Utley's Phillies that beat that 2008 Tampa Bay Rays team in the World Series. Utley's lone ring. The 1 1. Pulls a liner into the shift. Spangenberg. Two up. I think an infielder in short right field is the most effective part of the shift that we've seen since the shifts have come into vogue. You know, we see Big Poppy yeah. over in Boston hit it there. Adrian Gonzalez hits a lot of balls there. We're just, Jock Peterson hits it over there. We just see a lot of lefties that hit right into that shift. Hey, you talk about looking at the stats, looking at the numbers, and you're saying, okay, the shift, you're probably thinking, okay, where is that area that most likely it affects? And I bet you if they were putting dots on it, that's where more of most of the dots would be. Stay hot, Corey Seager. Three for three tonight. He wants two. Testing the arm of Kemp. He's in safely with a double.
Well, I like the way Corsair not only just getting this hit, but right out of the box, thinking double. Puts a nice swing on it, stays on that ball in the outer half. But right out of the box, he's going, he's hustling, and he's like thinking too. He recognizes that both outfielders were going at an angle to that ball, and that it would be tough once they got to the ball to have to come up and fire at second base, and he gets there. Two singles and a double for him now, and Justin Turner comes up. Looking for a two-out RBI with the Dodgers already in front, 3-0. Turner's grounded into a double play. Flight out to right, was robbed of extra bases by Kemp. Last inning. Dodgers had three two-out RBIs yesterday when they scored 15. And last year was a problem with them, the two-out clutch hit. They were 10th in the National League at 215. The Giants led the league with two out RBIs with a batting average of 272. Turner goes after an elevated fastball. One and one. Quietly, the number one offensive third baseman in the majors over the last two years by just about every measure. Whether you're a traditional stat guy or you like the newer age stats, just about every bottom line statistic tells you that there's no better hitting third baseman in the game since Justin Turner joined the team two years ago. 1-1, one, one, ball two. And to think that this guy was released less than three years ago by the Mets. Came to the Dodgers in 2014, had a breakout season, hit 340, getting a chance because of the injuries to Hanley Ramirez and Juan Uribe. And then last year, another big year, three and one. You can expand your compliments past third base too with Justin Turner. I mean, he's one of the best hitters in all the Major League Baseball now. When it comes to average over the last two seasons. Tied with Buster Posey, number one in the NL, regardless of position. Flies this one to right field. Matt Kemp is there. That's the inning. God, Dodgers get a two-out double from Seeger, but leave him there. They lead three-nothing. We're halfway home in San Diego. Back here in San Diego, beautiful downtown area where the ballpark is located. Those opening day tickets can be hard to score, but you know you can guarantee your tickets to opening day by getting the Dodgers mini plan. You can choose some great promotional games that feature fan favorites like bobbleheads and brand, to, brand new retired number pins. So visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans 
You get yours today. Scott Casimir back on the hill. He's retired 11 in a row. And Derek Norris, who struck out his first time, looks at a big bender for strike one. Nomar, remember you saying during spring training that when you look up and down this Padres lineup, this is the guy that if you were building a team, you would handpick from this group. Yeah, just the way, you know, he's a grinder. It goes out there, he plays the game hard, runs down the first base hard. He actually led this team last year in infield hits. So he's a catcher, and you wouldn't think that out of a catcher, but he's got some really good speed. And they also say just not only the way he plays, but also in the clubhouse, he has that type of personality where he is pushing guys, he's he's vocal, and, and you rally behind him. And he exudes that on the field. One base runner for the Padres tonight on an infield single in the first inning. Scott Kazmir's Dodger debut. The times this spring where the velocity wasn't what folks thought it should be. The numbers weren't good. There was some momentary panic from people overreacting. There was a pop up on the right side of the infield for Adrian Gonzalez. Thing is, though, I mean, we, we always talk about spring training being spring training, and you never want to look into the numbers too much, but especially when you're talking about a guy that's been playing in the majors for more than a decade. If he tells you that he's okay, chances are he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I think he really was building into getting to opening day and the season. He wasn't worried about the results, even asked to go over into the minor league field. It's like, I don't need a big league game. I want to go over here, and I want to work on some things. Get to know the rhythm of the new catchers. Build some communication with Rick Honeycutt, his new pitching coach, and then build his arm strength and bring his pitches along. We said it for a while. Spring training just doesn't matter. Enjoy it. Let the guys get in shape. Evaluate the young guys. It doesn't matter for veterans. Yep. <laughs> it matters for young guys trying to make it. And but, show that but, they can right, play a lot right, of veterans. But, but for the veterans. Salarte hits a skyscraping fly ball to Carl Crawford. 13 in a row retired by Scott Casimir. Alana Rizzo, what's going on? Well, Scott Casimir asked for that B game specifically, really to get on the same page with Yasmani Grandal as Oral was alluding to. They wanted to make sure that they could continue that rhythm between battery mates. And as far as the velocity was concerned, that so many people on the outside were making such a big deal out of. Yasmani Grandal told me after that B game that anytime Scott Casimir wanted to ramp it up as far as the velo was concerned he was able to do it. It was never a concern for either one of those guys or this team. Alexi Ramirez fouls off the first one and Oral you talked about it too as your career went on you would build yourself up as spring training went on. Yeah, you know as you get older your body is just not ready to fully compete until you kind of gradually ramp it up. You don't want to put your game face on that you're going to use in April and May at the beginning of the year when your body is not ready for it yet. And Ben Hines, our hitting coach at the time, when I was got starting to get older, he go, why is there so much levity in your spring training games? I said, Ben, I can't put my game face on right now. My, I would hurt myself. <laughs> I have to wait until my body is ready for my game face. Same reason you haven't kept score for a full game yet. You're ramping up to the... <laughs> I, I kept score <laughs> yesterday when Mr. Scully was doing it in yeah. the studio. So we've done yeah. one. Good. Finishing touches. Good. He was slowly building up Nomar as we yeah. were going through spring. Yeah. And I, you know what? He's right, though. When you're, <laughs> as you get older, too, and when you're a veteran, you end up knowing yourself. And it's not about the results. There's certain things over the course of spring that you're looking or trying to achieve that lets you know whether you're right, not right, what you have to work on. And you recognize that there is that buildup, whether it's a pitcher, position player as well. Where oftentimes you hear them when they get interviewed, the veteran guy is like, it wasn't the result. I felt the ball coming out of my hand nicely. A, a, a hitter saying, I saw the ball really well today. You know, well, you're 0 for 4. Yeah, but I actually saw the pitches. Hit hard, but right at Chase Utley. Another perfect frame for Scott Kazmir. And his Dodger debut is turning into a sparkling one. That's 14 in a row retired by Cavs.
Adrian Gonzalez sent the lead off the inning for the Dodgers up three nothing all three runs coming in the fourth against James Shields. Gonzalez scored one of those runs after doubling. Yasiel Puig brought home the game's first two tallies with the triple. Showed bunt and then fouled it off with the over shift on. Showing bunt made the shortstop who's shifting kind of lean in so it actually expands the hole on the left side because you start to screw up his footwork. Because he's starting to charge and say yeah. uh oh. Just the same way you would do it as a slap hitter if he was playing normal third base. We talked about we actually saw Adrian Gonzalez at spring training when they had the shift on him in at spring training actually work on it or actually square around to try to bunt over there. We even talked about it at spring training where if he's leading off the inning and they recognize that shift he is thinking about just taking advantage of it because he's not thinking about hitting it out of the park. Think about my job is a leadoff hitter. I'm supposed to get on base. Shield strikes him out with a tailing fastball back over the inside corner. Six punch out of the game. Up comes Yasiel Puig. We look at our Carl's Cam replay. It involves already two triples this year for Puig. One of them last night, one of them in the fourth inning to play two. And I think the key is seeing them where they go. The right center and then center field. Stay inside the ball, put nice swings on it. There's the Carl's Cam showing off Yasiel. Pulls a bounce to short. Alexi Ramirez gobbles it up and throws him out. Two away. Carl Crawford is one for two tonight with an RBI single in that three run fourth inning. Brought home Puig against a drawn in infield by shooting the ball through the left side. Key for Carl staying healthy. Four time All Star, but has dealt with injuries over the last few seasons. It's an All Star in 2004, in 07, in 09, and in 10. That was all with Tampa Bay. And it was all with James Shields, by the way. Those injuries have slowed Crawford down lately. If he stays healthy this year, he came into this year with 1,916 hits. He had a chance to enter the 2,000 hit club. Adrian Gonzalez, 1,792. He's probably not going to reach it this year. Crawford debuted way back in 2002, but his first full season the following year. And there was some days early on in his career when he was one of the bright young players in the game. Went from Tampa Bay to Boston, just wasn't a good fit there. He's admitted it. And he came over to the Dodgers as part of that nine player deal two days after he had had Tommy John surgery, which kind of started his downward spiral with the injury problems. Two and two. Well, the athleticism that he has, the speed. One thing is to have the speed. But I'll tell you, I remember playing against him. You know what you didn't want to do is get Carl in a rundown. <laughs> he was so hard to get out in just a rundown. <laughs> Reaches out, flips one to third. That's caught by Salarte. You saw some of his background as an option quarterback, yeah. right? As a point guard. Can't like quickness, but Carl Dodgers down in order in the six.
sixth inning. Of course, Melvin Upton Jr., just one half of the Upton brothers that used to play here in San Diego. Justin now with the Tigers, but he's a one pair of six different sets of Edmanos de los Padres that have played here. Of course, we have our own Adrian and Edgar Gonzalez and Jerry Hairston Jr. and his brother Scott Hairston, Brian and Marcus Giles, Tony and Chris Gwynn, of course, and Roberto and Sandy Alomar. Certainly a family affair here, guys. All right. And of course, Upton comes to the plate. His brother was dealt to the Tigers in the offseason, and that, in fact, opened up a spot, an everyday spot for the player formerly known as B.J. Upton. Scott Casimir back to work. One base runner against him today was on an infield single back in the first inning. It's kind of crazy to look back on it now, guys. I, you see Trace Thompson into the game and left. It was a ball that, what, 99 times out of 100, Chase Utley's going to make the play on. He just lost his footing on a routine chopper and then lost the ball out of his hand because he lost that footing. Spangenberg was able to beat it out. That's the only base runner tonight. Two one. Two and two. The only hit off of Clayton Kershaw last night was a ball that Carl Crawford really couldn't pick up. So Dodgers starters now. 12 innings, two hits, no runs. 2 2. One out. This is something Scott Casimir's putting together tonight. Well, he's had fastball location. He's had the outstanding changeup as he's gone through the order. Now, for the second time, he started to add a cut fastball into the righties. Hasn't really featured the curveball that much. It's mostly been the fastball changeup, and now. New little wrinkle with the cutter as they start to creep out to the outside corner of the right handed hitters. Now he can run something in on their hands. You see them going out there. I was about to say you, you didn't you haven't seen this because Austin Barnes and Casimir have really been on the same page. The only reason they're out there talking is because there's a pinch hitter right now. Correct. That pinch hitter guys is Jabari Blash. Making his big league debut this year. Big time power for this guy. Just looks like it. It's a rule five pick came over from the Seattle Mariners. 6'5", 235 pounds pounded 32 home runs last year in the minors in Tacoma. Yeah, that's not easy to do. Casimir got in on him. Justin Turner two out. Uh, when he was taking BP on that little weak ground ball, but during BP, I said he's hitting him up like where Mac used to hit him. Uh huh. I mean, I was just standing around the cage, didn't really even take notice of him in the cage, and then all of a sudden these balls are going into the second deck, and it's a different sound. I, I took notice because he was huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Originally from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Two out, John Jay 0 for 2. Strike one. On the topic of Dodgers starting pitching, and on the topic of day two of the season, side note, Zach Granke last night, seven runs allowed on nine hits in his Diamondbacks debut, including three home runs allowed, two of them from the rookie, Trevor Story, who's taken over at shortstop for the Rockies. He was blocked all those years in the minors by Troy Tulowitzki. Now, of course, is with Toronto. The red flag for Arizona in that game for me was Zach's velocity was down. A good three, four mile an hour. Seven runs on nine hits. Lasted only four innings. Two and one on John Jay and Kazmir. It's one to bite away. Jay lays off. Three balls in a strike. It's only the third three ball count of the night. Three and two.
17 straight retired by Scott Kazmir. Welcome to the Dodgers. Lineup relatively unchanged from last year. What they're counting on is bounce backs. And Jock Peterson was an all-star in the first half last year. These numbers you're seeing here for Puig and Peterson are what they put up in the second half. Peterson regressed, and in the case of Puig, he couldn't get over the injury bug and hit just 248. You know, Nomar, as we watched it too, it actually not only was it physical, it was mental. It seemed like they were lost. Yeah, it looked like they were constantly trying to find themselves on that second half. They from their their approach, from their mechanics. And and they knew going into the offseason and coming into the season that they were going to have to make an adjustment. So we've already seen early on Jock Peterson, Yasiel even talked about it, not only from a physical standpoint, we've seen his body, how he's changed. He's even talked about it, even from a mental approach and focus from a focus standpoint. We've seen the different leg kick that Jock Peterson worked on in the offseason as well. So they're trying to see if that's going to translate and carry into this season. Goes after the first one, Kevin Quackenbush. And pops out. And between innings, Scott Kazmir coming out of the game 75 pitches deep. And Dave Roberts over there having a word with him. We will get to see if he returns or not because he's due up this inning to hit. And I can tell you right now he's not going to return because Kike Hernandez is in the on deck circle. Ready to pinch hit for him. You're trying to build up his pitch count. You're trying to watch where are we in the order and you're getting ready to go back into the middle of the order for the Padres. And I'm sure Scott was asking and saying he's OK. But the long term view is to watch the pitch count build him up understand where we are in the order. And you know what we've got a very well rested bullpen because Clayton went seven yesterday. Amy Garcia took over his inning and did well and so did Luis Coleman. So we've got some pieces that need some work and they can line it up. And then also from the mental side here it is you're making your debut in a new team in the Dodger uniform and this is your first outing. I mean <laughs> get him up the tunnel in a good mood. We, yeah. we, you know we talked about going into spring training the question marks we knew well at, after Clayton Kershaw there were question marks. And that was still going to, they weren't going to be answered at spring training. Austin Barnes on the infield. Derek Norris making the call and the catch. And as spring training went along, 
you know, you, you, you try to think, are those question marks going to be answered? And you try to say, well, well, Kazmi, you look at his numbers, didn't quite have maybe a great spring training. How is it going to carry in? We said spring training doesn't matter. Now's the time where those questions have to be answered. And so far today, that's one step in answering the que question and a tremendous outing by Scott Kazmi. Season debut for Quackenbush. Third season he's had time in the majors, but this is his first opening day roster he's been on. On for James Shields, who gave up three runs on six hits and a walk over his six innings. Kike Hernandez looks at a curve for a strike. Another breaking ball, another strike. That season debut he did pitch last night, so two appearances in as many games for Kevin Quackenbush to start his year. Two breaking balls to start this at bat. Throws another, one ball, two strikes. Pedro Baez warming in the Dodger pen. Josh Bard, the bullpen coach you saw down there. All three runs tonight coming in the fourth inning for the Dodgers. Two run triple from Puig and an RBI single from Crawford. At the open, I was talking about Casimir coming into this game and having to follow up Clayton Kershaw. Uh -huh. I tried to, you know, it's tough, tough to follow up a guy in a performance like Clayton Kershaw, and, and he does. He matches him with one hit, giving up just one hit as well. Pretty impressive. He's got quite the do going. Some nice designs in the side of his head there. the detail at times there have almost been two mazes in that head <laughs> <laughs> well said PK goes after a high fastball bangs it to short low throw and Hernandez will reach to continue the inning That'll be an error on Alexi Ramirez. His fans in San Diego getting a little bit restless. Her team getting outscored 18 to nothing in these two games. Well, some sloppy D. Well, watch the ball at the end when it gets there. See how it just kind of comes up. He doesn't really field it that clean. And when that happens to an infielder, that almost just throws off your entire rhythm, too, when you just don't catch it cleanly. And then you got you got to constantly remind yourself that I right, move those feet, move those feet to get a good throw. Throws that in the dirt as we looked at the Morongo slow mo cam. Chase Otley three hits last night. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Well, the Dodger three runs were really scored after the Padres kind of left the door ajar with the ball in center field. It was misplayed. Yeah, the Dodgers barged through that jarred door with some hits behind that with Yasiel's triple. Crawford's base hit but we're looking at a man on first and two outs if they catch the ball John Jay catches the ball in center on Adrian Gonzalez's ball and this game might be a little different now veteran Utley looks at a breaking ball strike Southern California native Born in Pasadena, was raised in Long Beach, went to Poly High School, stayed around the area for college. He was a UCLA Bruin. The Dodgers originally drafted him, but he chose to go to UCLA instead, despite being a second round pick in 1997 out of Poly High. After his time at UCLA, he was a first round pick of the Phillies in 2000.
He is a pro's pro. There's nothing you watch him do around the clubhouse on the ball field that is not professional. He's locked in from the moment he arrives. He's got that Nomar intensity. <laughs> that was intense. Uh, I think it was pretty intense. He was pretty intense. <laughs> You know, there's Focus. Well, you know, there's things that he does. I mean, I know he gets everybody talks about the slide. There's a new rule at second base in last year with Ruben Tejada, which to me still, I don't see what he did wrong. Went out there, played hard. But also even yesterday, the way he came to score at home plate when he got thrown out, you know, he was going and he was playing it right. He didn't, it wasn't a dirty slide, whatever. He was actually tr what you're supposed to do, recognizing where the ball is coming from and possibly maybe getting hit by that ball. That's how you're supposed to play this game. So he does little things like that that could be a factor in the game and change it. On the bench in the clubhouse, they call that a winner. <laughs> you're right. You're talking about his. You know, the little things, some of the manifesting and base running. And you can go ahead and plug your ears, Oral, because I'm going to use, or no more, I'm going to use a, a metric thing here. Since 1950, since 1950, he's 13th in Fangraph's base running above replacement. So, meaning above the average base runner, he's 13th best all time. So, he definitely doesn't have the 13th best wheels. Right. Right. So that shows his technique and his ability to get jumps and the ability then to read and make the right turns and to slide properly and to advance when he's supposed to advance. Yeah. Take extra bases. Extra bases. All of it. Yeah. So those numbers basically tell you which what you would say no more. He's a good base <laughs> runner. I don't need those numbers to tell me <laughs> that. But no, Justin but Turner said it rubs off too. He said as soon as. He arrived last year from the Phillies. The entire team started running the bases better. There's a bullet. Caught it short by Ramirez to retire the side. Dodgers up 3-0. Stretch time in San Diego. A 15-0 win in game one, a 3-0 lead in the seventh inning of game two of the 2016 campaign. Pedro Baez comes in. You know, guys, the bullpen relatively unchanged from last season. A couple of new pieces to it. 
But Andrew Friedman said during the offseason the reason they didn't go out and make a ton of moves there is because they're such big believers in guys like Pedro Baez. Guys again like we talked with Jock Peterson Yasiel Puig that need to make that step forward. Jimmy Garcia Pedro Baez. These are the kind of guys that young big arms that just need to get a little bit more accurate and a little bit more consistent. Two three and four coming up for San Diego Corey Spangenberg one for two. A lone base runner tonight back in the first inning if you're just joining us it came on a bouncer to second that Chase Utley mishandled. Turn around the grass at third. Barnes setting inside wants it down. Gets it there strike two. Now the one thing too about Pedro Baez, Yimmy Garcia, Chris Hatcher. For me, the thing that I like to see the adjustments they make coming into this year, not only just from their effectiveness, but also their tempo. I mean, we saw when you have Scott Kazmir, the way he just came in was throwing strikes, mowing them down, but he also had a good pace and tempo on the game. You know, for relievers that come in, it's kind of nice if they can keep up that tempo when you see your starter doing that. Because that really helps the defense out so they can stay on their toes but they're not caught back on their heels and they gives them better range to help the pitcher out. Spangenberg leading off the seventh. By striking out on a fastball at 96 from Pedro Baez, one away. 96 is really hard when you start him off with two off-speed pitches, a small little change-up, and then a breaking ball, and then the count builds. But he hasn't seen 96 there yet. And blows it right by him. Matt Kemp for two, over five in this series. And so in this season. Go right there. Start him off. Going off speed again. When you can throw 96 miles an hour, and if you can just throw it on one half of the plate or the other. Or throw it low or throw it high. The next thing you need is a breaking ball for a strike. And once you have those two tools, you can be really effective. If you can go to the next level after that, that's when you become unhittable. And so, with a guy with Pedro's arm, he doesn't need to like throw it low and away on the black, he doesn't need to throw it up and in for a strike. He needs to be able to throw it low for a strike, high for a strike, and maybe then slightly above, and then maybe throw a breaking ball for a strike and a breaking ball he can bounce. That will be enough with his arm strength. Through the fastball 75% of the time last year. Throws it here at 97. Kemp barely gets a piece. As your velocity diminishes, your accuracy or your movement has to go up. He, he can shoot a shotgun towards home plate where Casimir has to shoot more of a rifle. Breaking ball got it. Back to back strikeouts to start Baez night. The Giants come to Dodger Stadium for three games beginning Friday, April 15th. Be sure to get your tickets today. You can purchase some by going to Dodgers.com slash tickets. Giants are 2-0.
beating the Brewers 2-1 tonight. Johnny Cueto in his debut gives up just one run over seven innings. Panic and Crawford both a couple of hits apiece. Got in in the hands of Will Myers with a 96 mile per hour fastball for strike one. A nice little change up in the sequence. Started the last two hitters off that he and Austin Barnes with off speed stuffs. We know that Myers has been watching that and they start him off with a fastball in. Going to it again. They miss but got a strike. Like he talked about that's one thing that velocity helps out pitchers velocity allows you for a little bit of margin of error. Pedro Baez trying to strike out the side. Barnes couldn't squeeze it. And it stays at 0 2 on Will Myers. For an 0 2 pitch, that's a hanging changeup. But because of the speed differential, because of the velocity, the tools he brings to the mound, he can get away with that missing a spot. Right about here, he could throw that. Breaking ball blown away that he threw to Matt Kemp. Make it look like a fastball for a strike, end up blown away. Or oh, they're going up the ladder with a fastball. Yes. He can throw any one of his three pitches to a general area. As long as it's effective, he should get him out. Well, they finally put it in play, but it's an easy play. Justin Turner getting the speedy Myers to finish the frame. Good work, Pedro Baez with a 1 2 3 inning. Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. And by Jack in the Box. Taste the baconlicious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. Third Padre pitcher of the night is Brandon Maurer on for his 2016 debut. Trying to become the first guy to retire Corey Seager tonight. Two, three, and four for the Dodgers. Ball one. Corey is single in the first. Single in the fourth. Scored the game's first run and then a double in the fifth. Popped up the short left. This is where his first single of the night went. Upton Jr. on to put this one away. 
Take a look at our SoCal Honda in-game box score. It will show that the Dodgers' three runs came in one inning with Corey Seager scoring the first one. Adrian Gonzalez scoring the next. Puig scoring the third. First two scored on Puig's two-run triple. Carl Crawford brought home Puig with a base hit of his own. It's been the top part of the order getting the job done tonight for Dave Roberts' team. And they did a tremendous job taking advantage of that one inning on James Shield. You touched on the earlier oral about that misplay out there in center field by John Jay. And he's looking at that. Just looking at that scoring right there and you saw at the top with Chase Utley going 0 for 4. But he could 0 for 4 right now but easily be 2 for 4 because he's lined out twice to swung the bat well. Corey Seager yesterday with a one for six looked like he got caught up in the exhaust of all the other hits by everybody else but tonight comes back with with three. Brandon Maurer out of Newport Beach California. 25 year old deals a 3 1 strike 2. Payoff to Turner. Seager flied to left. Turner takes strike three. And this ball was down. It was borderline whether it caught that corner or not. You see Justin Turner as he dropped the bat going over there and upset and was like already unbuckling his shin guard. A good thing that he. Uh, Went and grabbed the bat and walked off because Eric Cooper, the home plate umpire, was watching him and he had some words for him. Let him talk and then walked back to the dugout. Adrian Gonzalez always gets a unique reception here. The city that he was born in, city that he grew up in, spent a few years in Mexico as a child, but his family moved back here to San Diego when he was eight. The first overall pick in the draft. From high school here in San Diego to the Florida Marlins back in 2000. And from the Marlins to the Rangers, from the Rangers to the Padres. It's been five years here in San Diego. Through 2010, was traded to Boston the following season. Waits on this one two and swings through a fastball at 96. Good work by Brandon Maurer in that eighth inning for the Padres. Out of the bottom half. LA in front, three zip.
Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. And by Children's Hospital Los Angeles, we treat kids better. Chris Hatcher was a different pitcher in the second half last year after he returned from that sprained oblique and makes his debut in 2016. An outstanding big arm, a great split finger, little slider, and much better command. Attack in the strike zone. A lot of his problems came from ball one, ball two, and then having to come down Broadway. Now he's learned to really get ahead, and he's mastered his own body and mechanics. Went fouled off of the mask of Barnes. And he even touched on it after he came back after that injury. Then not only did he go down to obviously rehab and heal, but he also said it was good for him to go down and work on mechanics and recognize that he had to make some adjustments, that what he was doing prior to that injury wasn't working and wasn't as effective. And kudos to him for recognizing that and coming back and making an impact. He was out from mid-June until mid-August. It was 01. Bends into the knees for a strike. And he's ahead of Norris, 0-2. When he comes set from the stretch, when he was struggling before he got hurt and remade his mechanics, he was a little more closed, maybe only looking at home plate with one eye, but now a little bit more open on the first base side of the rubber and really kind of stares in and zeroes in on the target with two eyes. It's not quite as deceptive a delivery, but it's a much more effective delivery as far as his command. Norris 0 for 2 tonight, but who isn't? One base runner for San Diego on an infield single in the first from Corey Spangenberg. 2-2 to Norris. One out. One away in the eighth inning. And we take a look at our Access Sportsnet studios back in Los Angeles. The guy's getting ready. We'll break it down after the game. A lot of Rizzo will have interviews and reactions in the clubhouse. As soon as we finish, Access Sportsnet brought to you by Nissan. I'm really surprised Jerry's not looking up at the camera. He is so camera ready. <laughs> you know he was looking at himself in that monitor looking yeah, down. That's what it was. <laughs> so he's like, I, I don't hate, I didn't need to look up. Ned looked very stoic there. <laughs> Ned's always pro, yeah. pro's pro. Yep. Who was the guy on the far side, the right side here? John something. John Hartung? <laughs> you know, when I, uh, when my hiring was announced, all three of those guys reached out in the first few days to welcome me. Good dudes. That, that you know they they're listening to us, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't change the fact that they're good guys. 2-0 to Solarte. Did they? Not only text you or call you, but did they buy you gifts? Oh, no, hey, they no, they didn't give me any cufflinks. <laughs> Look like, at these things. You know, Rook, I had to get you some cufflinks to match your name. So you have your Bulldog cufflinks. I now have Rooks. That's right. I've got them on tonight. Welcome aboard. Congratulations, and we are so glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Glad to be here. So you're going to have to wear those all year. <laughs> what do I put on next year? Well, then, you know. Oh, boy. Well, there, you can't wear those because you're no longer a rook. No uh, more. No more. I'll get you something. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. I'm in charge of the paper part of the marriage. He's in charge of the second year. <laughs> <laughs> Down on strikes goes Solarte. And Hatcher does the same thing Baez did. And that is begin his season with back to back punch outs. Key for the bullpen right now after a performance by Scott Kazmir. Tremendous performance. You got Baez coming in. 
Pair of strikeouts putting a zero up on that inning. It's up to Chris Hatcher to continue that. And hopefully be able to hand off the ball. For a closer. Started Alexi Ramirez off with a cutter just missed ball one. Started utilizing that cutter more after he came back from the disabled list took some off his slider. Numbers improved a ton. One and one through the fastball guys two thirds of the time before the injury that dropped down to half the time after the injury as he started mixing in more off speed. Well, as the mechanics get better and you can repeat them then your release point gets better and then your range and your accuracy and you feel like you can now spin the ball and you also when you're throwing your fastball for strikes you get to your secondary pitches when you're ahead in the count. And Rick Honeycutt was the one that suggested that when he, as he was building himself back up that he takes some speed off his slider and also throw the cutter to give him more differential. He pretty much was pitching like a bull in a china shop like everything harder has got to be better. And now he's learning that taking a little off kind of a little better resting heart rate as he comes set and just kind of thinking about hitting the target getting in the right area and creating the right speed and break is more important than just the running of the Bulls. His 2 1. Hit through his legs behind second. Chase Sutley finishes the inning with a nice play. That is seven consecutive one, two, three innings executed by Kazmir, then Baez, then a Hatcher, three nothing on the night. Off of the top. Good luck to Scott Casmer having to follow this guy who went seven innings, shut out baseball, nine strikeouts, gave up just one hit. All Casmer did was go six innings and do the same darn thing. Both looked tremendous, didn't they? I mean, just Scott Casmer coming out in his Dodger debut. The command was there. The mixing of pitches, the rhythm. He was in sync with Austin Barnes behind home plate. Just everything all around was very efficient. There's a guy right there who started it all ye yesterday. And talking with his battery mate. And, you know, hopefully it continues. They're going to pass the baton to Kenta Maeda yep. tomorrow. Yeah, looking forward to that, huh? Yeah. He had a huge circle of media around him before the game after BP of all the reporters following him around getting ready for his first outing over here. This is far from the first outing. Fernando Rodney's career split last year between Seattle and the north side of Chicago now comes here to replace Craig Kimball in the closers role in San Diego. He'll face five six and seven Yasiel Puig up first. This is as animated of a hitter pitcher matchup as you may find in the majors. Week tonight, one for two. 
And the big blow of the evening, a two-run triple back in the fourth and then scored on Crawford's ensuing base hit. For Scott Kazmir, by the way, this is just how he started last year. April 8, 2015, seven shutout innings against Texas. While he was a member of the Oakland A's, struck out 10 in that game. Rodney's 2 1. We bounces it to short for Ramirez. This week only, T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. So go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB to sign up now and catch every moment on America's fastest-growing LTE network. First at-bat tonight for Trace Thompson, whose first at-bat as a Dodger was a double last night. Kelly Jansen preparing for the ninth. Strike one to Thompson. Former Chicago White Sox. His first year in a Dodger uniform. In his big league debut last year on the south side of Chicago. He's one of the key pieces in that three team deal. They sent Todd Frazier from the Reds to the White Sox. Chases one and two. You could have a very young athletic outfield in a year or two. Trace Thompson may be in left, Yasiel Puig in right, and Jock Peterson in center. Who knows? Thompson down on strikes. Two away in the ninth. Yesterday, Trace Thompson came in the game as well. And he had two at bats, one walk, and got a base hit. There strikes out, but I think that also shows how, you know, Dave Roberts talked about getting everybody in the ball game, making sure they're ready every day so that they're just not sitting there getting cold. So when they, the day he needs a call on them, that they're ready, that they've gotten some work in. Ball on to Jock Peterson. Two strikeouts and a pop out tonight. How many days is too long, Nomar? How many mm. days can you sit before you've kind of lost it and it's going to take you a long time to get back in it? You know, that's that's different for any, everybody, actually. That's why we always admired those guys that were those utility guys that can come off and maybe sit three to four days, sometimes even five days, and still come in and get a hit and be effective. Quality at bat, yeah, even that after just, sitting that long. Because it's not easy to do. So some people are like, oh, uh, two days, it's too long. Some three days. And then some guys can wait a week and look like they just got out of bed and go get a hit. Manny Moda, Lenny Harris. Guys like that. Think of uh, Dave Hansen. Some great pinch hitters. Little cue shot up along third. Will it stay fair? Rolls just foul. Hit that lip of the grass. Between the lip and the spin that a left handed hitter will have when he hits a ball in that direction. That ball had good side spin. Well, with the spin, you know, it's interesting here. As you saw Fernando run and kind of fall off, and then he stopped, like, get out of the way. There's no chance. But look at Norris. He's still running after. You know why? Because there is spin, and he didn't want that ball to roll back fair. That's your guy. It's Going out there hustling, just not assuming and taking it for granted, like, all right, it's a foul ball. When you're not watching baseball this weekend, you can see balls move like that in the Masters. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some big turns on those greens. You a big golf watcher, Oral? Yeah, I used to be a big golfer until huh. my body started to break down. 
I know your strategy is the same as mine, Nomar. Get your money's worth. Take as many strokes as you can if you're going to go play. Absolutely. Why would they're like, oh, give as few as strokes as you I paid a lot of money to play on this golf course. I'm going to get my money's worth. That's, what, I'm That's what I say. Yep. <laughs> I paid a lot of money to play on the golf courses, too, especially when Tommy caught me with the clubs on the airplane and I wasn't supposed to have it. He goes, Bulldog, that's $250. I said, Skip, okay. Next day, I beat him into the clubhouse, put a check for 1000 on his desk. He comes out of his clubhouse locker, and he goes, what is this, Bulldog? I said, you're going to catch me three more times. <laughs> <laughs> and Jock earns the walk, I think. Yep. Put, I put my wife's maiden name on the bag, thinking he wouldn't, you know, really research because uh -huh. the broadcasters at the time were allowed to still play and so I'm just added in with the broadcasters bags and we were going to New York and Pittsburgh and I was going to play like Wingfoot and Oakmont and all these great courses he went down the belly of the plane with our clubhouse guy and was reading the name tags on every golf bag. wow so it's not bad to play Pine Valley and Oakmont and Wingfoot for a thousand bucks though yeah right <laughs> see wouldn't you want to get your money's worth like we That's talked about? That's what I'm about. saying. Right. I got Let's my go. money's worth. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, swing. Swing away. And I usually when I play, I get a look of the whole course, not just the yeah, fairway. Right. <laughs> right. Anyone could hit off the fairway. Well, you, you were a spray hitter. Use the whole field. Exactly. That just doesn't work out in golf. Yeah. <laughs> oh, scenic parts of the courses aren't always the, uh, the straightest route to the hole. Mm -hmm. Try to see if I can have a trick shot. Oh. <laughs> Around the tree somehow. <laughs> so do you have a master's pick for us all? Oh boy. Not Sorry really. to put you on the spot. Here. Yeah. It's okay if you don't. Boyd Robertson, our stage manager, he's he's picking for me Jason Day. Okay. We'll go with that one. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I love watching it. Masters in HD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is. We're going to have to record it because I think we're going to be on the plane back to L.A. from the Sunday game in San Francisco. All right. Peterson takes off. Throw down to second. Not close. Chuck steals his first base of the year. With my Time Warner cable, I can uh, record up to six stations at once. Wow. So every one of the Masters channels. Yeah. You'll get every angle. Amen Corner, 18th Green, the live broadcast, you can get them all. Three balls and a strike on Austin Barnes. Dodgers trying to add some insurance. Heading into the bottom of the ninth. Moves back in, three and two. For the Padres in the bottom half, eight, nine, and one do up. That'd be Upton in the pitcher's spot. Then John Jay against Kenley Jansen. Things have gone as planned tonight. One base runner for the Padres. Six shutout frames for Casimir. Perfect inning from Baez. Perfect inning from Hatcher. And a 3 2 to Barnes. Got him. Filthy stuff from Fernando Rodney. Passing those seat belts on to the bottom of the ninth. Kenley Jansen on for the first time, trying to lock down win number two of the year.
trying to get his first save of the 2016 season. A bit of a scary moment yesterday when the Dodgers were on the field here at Petco Park taking BP. Kenley Jansen and J.P. Howell were playing catch with one another in the outfield and J.P. Howell accidentally hit Kenley below his left eye with a baseball. At first Kenley said he started to see double but he was certainly uh, walked off the field with the trainer and after the game yesterday I spoke to him he said he was fine. He, they actually were joking about it in the clubhouse afterwards, but certainly a scary moment. He is fine. No ill will. He's on the hill. Here we go. Well, last year he had to wait till May 15th because of his foot surgery to get into his first game and get his first save. Well, here, thank goodness that ball didn't clip his eye in a way that he couldn't pitch. He's waited long enough for this outing, and now he's got a save situation, which he has done very, very well ever since he's been a Dodger. Rick Cunningham has to love what he's seeing so far. Couldn't Joe. lay it out any better, no, Joe. No, this is exactly how you draw it up through eight innings and through 17 innings, really, this year. Travis Jankowski will pinch hit for Melvin Upton Jr. to begin this ninth inning. Eight, nine, and one. Handful of at bats. Last year in his big league debut, this is his first opening day roster. Had a pinch hit single last night. Six from Baez, or six from Casimir. One from Baez, one from Hatcher. Now Kenley Jansen. Crack bat, one bounce, one out. Well, that's what that cutter can do, especially when you got a righty facing the lefty. They always think, okay, you like that matchup, but when that cutter comes in, it breaks the bat, gets off the barrel. A lot of broken bats, as you can see. The save percentage is right there that Kenley's had over the years. Better and better as he's become one of the best closers in the game. One away faces another pinch hitter, Brett Wallace. In the pitcher's spot, John J. Dunex. Strike one. The Dodgers record by the way for the most consecutive scoreless innings to begin a season 23 consecutive scoreless innings in 1974. And they went on to win the pennant. Seventeen right now trying to make it 18 and back to back shutout wins. Played Kershaw last night, magnificent, just like you'd expect. Scott Casimir tonight, a step above what the expectations coming in were. One base runner over his six innings of work. Jansen's 0-2. And we talked earlier about the Kansas City Royals great bullpen. They were the number one in ERA at 2.69 last year. But it doesn't take the best bullpen to be a world champion. The only other number one bullpen to win a world championship in the last 10 years of 2008 Phillies. Well also the Boston Red Sox in 2007. I apologize. But I tell you what the Dodger bullpen they definitely want to improve from last year. Two gone in the ninth inning as Jansen blows it by Wallace. Cutter prior to this turned out to be a broken bat ground ball. This one finds its way into the glove. John Jay, last hope for the Padres, trying to get aboard, keep the line moving. Top of the Padres order now. On the ground off of Kenley spinning into the outfield is Utley and he has no play. 
So Jay's aboard. The first base runner for the Padres since Spangenberg's infield single in the first. Both hits end up going to Chase Utley. Right here, Kenley tried a kick save and wasn't a butte. The deflection to Utley, Utley able to spin and keep it within the infield. There's no way you're going to get him at first. I'm just impressed by this. So we were talking about Scott Casimir, the performance he had. But then you got the bullpen, Pedro Baez, Chris Hatcher. I mean, together with Kenley Jansen with the first two outs, retiring 26 in a row. Spangenberg trying to reach to bring Matt Kemp up. He would represent the tying run. Jay takes off on strike one. Kenta Maeda and Andrew Kashner tomorrow in the series finale before the Dodgers travel north to San Francisco. They play four with the Giants beginning Thursday afternoon. Trying to get one more out in this one to start the year 2-0 under Dave Roberts. Strike two. Jay was running again. He'll go back to first. Spangenberg fouls off another. Still one ball, two strikes, with two gone in the ninth inning, and the Dodgers up 3 0. Quigg's two run triple back in the fourth. The difference in this game. He'd score on a Crawford single moments later. It's all the scoring coming in one frame. A gem from start to finish tonight. Six shutout frames from Scott Kazmir, then Baez, then Hatcher, then Jansen, all with a scoreless inning of work. Two games and two shutouts in 2016. Our Lexus player of the game is Scott Kazmir, whose Dodger debut is a thing of beauty, Oral. Uh, he had everything working the fastball location which set up the change up and then later on the cut fastball really didn't feature the curveball but didn't need it and whatever pressure he felt putting on the new uniform and the great new contract he dealt with it and he performed two base runners tonight total for San Diego only five hit 